I want to ask about the the indescribable and I just want to say I was blown away by it. I absolutely loved it. it. It started off, it's really funny, it's very, you know, lovely, but then it it sort of just touches me in a way that I didn't think it was going to. And I was very caught off guard by how sentimental it was. I don't know, I really I really was taken away by it. And so I'd love for you to talk about what, what sparked you to do that. Well, that's a good question. Uh, yeah. Well, for those who don't know that, I did a, an independent film called The Indescribable Nth. And it's, it's based on, I had originally had this idea about a kid who was born with his heart inside of a snow globe. Where this stuff comes from, I don't know. But it, 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 you have the idea, you write it down in a little book, and, and then you start throwing ideas around, and I think thinking about love and dating and all, you know, and all the, all this, all that stuff. And, and I ended up with this story that I thought was funny, and, and I have a friend, uh, his name is Al Holter. He works in animation. He's recently retired, but... And Al had, in his garage, this massive German printing press. He had just made a book for a friend, a friend's daughter had written this book, Sarah Bates, she's an adult now, but at the time, it was going back 30 some years, had, she was this little kid and she'd done these, this story about horses, you know, and then they made this book and, and they had a party for it. And I'm looking at it going, you made this? And, 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 and in my head, I'm going, now I know where I want to do with my story that I had. And I went out, I said, I got a story I want to do with you. I went in. And so we made this book. We ended up making like 300 of these things. And oh, wow. I think it damn near killed Al because was, <laughs> he was individually sewing these things together and, <laughs> and, and individually, individual type, you know, it was the old oh, type. Oh my God. Cranking the printing press. And he did all of that. You know, I, I just, hats off to him. And, and uh, we had a party for this. And at the party, people were looking at the book and they said, so you want to make a short out of this? And I hadn't thought about it, but then what happened was I was on a film that we were going to make this Betty Boop movie. And see this love in my heart Just gave it all to you And there was um, with Jerry Reese and, yeah. and uh, Richard and Lily Zanuck were producing and, and Richard Fleischer was an old time film director. He was producing, he, his, his dad was uh, Max Fleischer. I think I got that right. It wasn't Dave, but he, his dad was Max Fleischer. And anyway, he we were gonna do this Betty Boop movie. They had a, a, a management change at MGM. The head guy was out, new guy was in, killed the project. Uh, I had a pay or play contract. So I had a year where I was getting paid. Mm. I didn't have to go find another job. So I decided I'm going to work on this film. And so I, I boarded the whole thing up and in my my bedroom, I put, put storyboard panels up. Now this became my story room. And I got working on that. And uh, and that's when Gavin called me about Goofy. I was working on that. And so everything got put on hold for a couple of years. Oh. And then when I got back from Australia, there was a studio in Ohio that I'd worked with on Betty Boop movie. See, all this stuff will connect eventually. It's like right. complicated. But when we were working on Betty Boop, there was a studio in Ohio called Character Builders. It was owned by uh, Jim Camerud, Marty Fuller, and they had these great artists in their place that were doing designs for the Betty Boop movie. And uh, I got to know these guys through that. And then they started doing some board work, things like that. And then, then it died. And then they went off and did a lot of animation on the original Space Jam for Warner Brothers. And when Space Jam finished, they didn't have another project right away. So they were just kind of sitting around. And so I pitched to them, you want to make a short? And I had my boards ready. And in fact, I had put together an animatic and mm -hmm. we went out there and we and we made this thing together. We produced this, this short. That took, you know, probably took another couple of years because we were, again, working in between paying gigs we'd pick some of this up and you know and so the whole thing went from what was it 19 went from like 1990 from the original book idea to 1999 when we finished the short film yeah so and then we put it in a bunch of festivals and you know we got a bunch of little trophies and and uh i tried to tried to get it in for the academy awards and and 
It was shortlisted, but my, I think part of my problem was it was the same year as the Fractured Fairy Tale, and I didn't know that Universal was going to put that up for consideration. And so now I had two films in the short list. So he had 10 films on the short list of Oscar uh, nominations. I had two of them. Did people say I canceled myself out? You know, I, I, uh, I, <laughs> it's like, well, oh, well, but, but I was there. I was there. I got to go to the, the screening and amazing. Yeah. I, um, I was so, um, moved by the way that you portray vulnerability that you give access to someone that you're falling in love with just the portrayal of this heart in the snow globe and having someone else shake it when a mm. parent was shaking it at first i just thought that was so well done i fell in love and we broke up and i feel like i was you know trying so hard to to be able to put that into words and I feel like your short is a great example of this stuff is impossible to put into words. It's, it's mm. sort of like imagery and this kinetic energy that you get from film that can portray it, that can do a good job of portraying that feeling. So that's the title. That's, you know, that yeah. was coming up with the title. That was the tricky part. And it's like, well, what is that feeling? It's a, it's an indescribable, Nth. Yes, <laughs> you yes. Know? And it's almost a joke, but it's you get it. A lot of things about the short, as far as like stylistically and 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 some of those shortcuts to, to get right to it. That was me responding to what Disney was doing at the time with features, where they were getting more and more, more and more realistic, less cartoony. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, they were they were making things like Pocahontas and then and then uh, Hunchback and Notre Dame and and these things that or just, um, I, I guess I wanted to prove that you could tell an emotional story with something extremely simple. You didn't need all that crazy, the, the bells and whistles and all that. You know, what, what's at the core of character animation is the animation. Doing that kind of acting that, you know, here, these things are just a bunch of drawings on paper. Back then it was, but even today with, with CG, it's just, it's not a real thing. But that's the magic trick is you think you, you imbue life on this thing for an audience. They're, they're watching a bunch of drawings going by at 24 frames a second, hitting their eyeballs, and their brain and their, and their heart is translating that into something human and, and real and, and having feelings. And, and you're feeling for this for this kid who's had his heart broken by this, this horrible girl who's clearly wrong for him, <laughs> but he's not seeing it. You know, and, and you're so happy for him when he gets a second chance and, and, and you know, and, and just just making her somebody that want a shortcut. Yeah, this is somebody I want to hang out with. Yeah, this is somebody she's fun, you yeah. know, and, 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 and making Doris like clearly a horrible person. <laughs> she's just a nightmare. But, you know, so you, you do those kind of shortcut. Well, it's a short, so you got to get right to it. Yeah. And then I think... You know, the secret ingredient with all that ended up being the score. I had originally played around. I, I'd scratch stuff. I'd pulled up like the blues. I'm thinking, well, the blues, it's, a, you know, it's the kids got the blues. We'll play the blues. <laughs> and it just wasn't working. And and, and one day I, I was watching, I think I was watching like an old Charlie Chaplin film or something. And they, and they had a string quartet. And I went, that gets you right there. I get, you know, and, and, and then I went out and I got, I listened to uh, the Brodsky Quartet or String Quartet, and then just, and I'm like, yes, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. And then I had reached out to um, when it came to an actual recording it. I contacted my friend uh, Benny Wallace, who is a jazz musician. He's a saxophone player, but he had done the score for my Redux Riding Hood short. Mm. Uh, I knew Benny from Betty Boop. He had done music on Betty Boop too. So see, it's all connecting. And I was talking to him about this. Just in general, do you know like string quartets and things like this? And and I don't know if it was his idea or mine, but he he was game to do the score. And he had never done a score. He'd done film scores like uh, White Men Can't Jump and a, a couple other films, but he had never used a string quartet or composed for a string quartet. And so he liked the challenge of that. And and his thing at the time is, don't send me the film that's got the scratch music on it. I don't want to hear it. 
He goes, I, I mean, as I, he didn't want to be influenced by it. So it took, right. took all that out. And I sent him one that was just, just the audio and effects. And he came up with this thing. We went, this was, I was working on all of the other reindeer. This was 1999. It was the last thing we did. I took a weekend and I flew up to uh, New York and we went to this little recording studio in Brooklyn and we had, uh, it was a, a, a quartet called Hazardous Materials. Usually you hear, you hear something that's a synth, like scratch version of a, of a score before you actually go and hear it recorded. This was like, here it is, first time, mm. <clears throat> Got, you know, and they're, they're playing this thing. They get to some of like the stuff at the end with the, the where he finds the new heart and he's and that whole thing and you know i'm choking up i'm in the booth i'm choking up because i a it's just beautiful but b they're doing this for me like like this is this is really overwhelming they finished and i look benny i i couldn't even talk i'm like Finally, I like. I think I just said, "Damn, Benny." <laughs> <laughs> it's like you like. It's like yeah, and it, it. I don't know that we did two takes on any of it. They were so wow. good. Wow. We, you know, we probably did, but you know, it was just so beautiful. And and you put that to the picture, and then that just you got sucked in. You 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 know, we had you at that point. You we yes. put that to those visuals. You're yes. done. <laughs> oh, I when he opens the safe and pulls mm -hmm. out the new snow globe, that mm -hmm. had me. That had me. That that made it one of the greats for me. It's definitely up there. Did I don't you know that list. was coming? I did not know that was coming. <laughs> I didn't know that was coming. I, I got so taken away. I was like, what? He did it. You know, he got that feeling, and so super impressed by it. Mm -hmm.